under her eyes. Have you been having night terrors, child? Was it about the rats, Olivia? Were you dreaming about the rats again? Can you still see the scrutinizing pinprick eyes flash at you from the darkness? But forget about that because now you're awake and you need to be entertained. Lucky for you, Sonny and I have such a vast movie library with which we can share with you. Say, Vic, Remember when I found you playing with your dollhouse, and you told me that it wasn't yours, and that you were sleepwalking? And that was also why you pissed in the silverware drawer? No, Sonny, I don't remember that. I do remember crying about it, though, so thank you for bringing it up. Well, it just reminded me of that movie we just watched. I don't remember watching a movie about pissing in a silverware drawer. Not recently, anyway. No, I mean, the thing about the dollhouse. Remember Hereditary? Oh, yeah. I thought it was pretty good overall, now that I've had time to think about it. Yeah. Hey, let's watch it again. We can all watch it together. Gather round, ye nursling moppets, and aim your cherubic faces at the TV. Sonny, where's the tape? Didn't we accidentally destroy the videotape? <laughs> well, no matter. We'll just psychically impress our opinions of the movie directly into your brains. Using our magic TV! We stole it from the pawn shop! Just keep your eyes on the screen and enjoy the video. We. But first, we'd like to take time out to thank our sponsor. The Ruiners is brought to you by Tragedy Tony's Commemorative Catastrophe Dioramas. When you've experienced a traumatic event, when you lose someone, it can feel like you've lost everything. And all you have is your memories. And, in time, even those memories can fade. But Tragedy Tony is here, and she wants to make your custom commemorative catastrophe diorama. Never again forget the tragic moments of your life. Well, we sure picked a great sponsor for today's movie, Sonny. Indeed we did. Why don't you tell the kids a little about the movie, Vic? Hereditary is a 2018 demonological family drama written and directed by Ari Aster, starring Tony Collette, Gabriel Byrne, <laughs> Millie Shapiro and Alex Wolf. <laughs> Sonny, what is your problem? <laughs> you, you said Gabriel Byrne. That, that's funny. Be because of him burning to death in the movie. <laughs> yes, it is funny when somebody gets burned alive, but I don't see what his name has to... Oh. Whoa! It just occurred to me. Gabriel Byrne gets burned to death? Is that like symbolism? Uh, sure, Sonny, whatever. You could say anything in this movie had a purpose behind it, and you'll always look smart and cool. Hereditary is one of those modern movies that people get to watch and pat themselves on the back for actually paying attention. You know, those movies where everything is filmed intentionally, and the camera shows you things, and the people say things that are important to the movement from one moment to the next in the plot. Yeah, but people still feel the need to either explain this movie or have the movie explained to them. Many felt like they had no idea what was going to happen next, and even in the end they were still confused. Well, the confusion is understandable because it's integral to the story. But trust us, kids, this is the oldest one in the book. Tales of hauntings and of demonic possession. Tales of family curses, madness, and inherited sin. These things have all been done to death. <laughs> but Hereditary uncomfortably inserts these classic horror themes into a modern family drama, and refreshingly... You were pulling on my head! The results aren't all that silly. But it was a very polarizing movie. The reviews were fire and ice. Let's take a sample of what the world thought of Hereditary when it first came out. And to help us out with that, we're gonna bring in our new male girl. All the way from the jungles of Pandemonium, Let's all give a warm welcome to Winifred the Mailhead! Hey guys, what's happening? Hi kids. Hi Winifred! Hi Winifred! 
We're very happy to have you. Yeah. Thanks. Great place you got here. I decorated. No, you didn't. You just smeared industrial waste on the walls. Well, I don't seem to remember you giving any input into this. So, does it always smell like this, or...? Do you like the way it smells? Well... Can we call you Winnie? No. Ah. Um, you can call me Freddy, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, hey, Winnie. Um, I didn't see you there. I was just, uh, like, uh, f flexing and stuff. Hanging out. Yeah, I can see that. Hanging is a bit too strong a word, though, isn't it? You're kind of just poking out. Huh? Well, what do you... I don't... Never I don't... mind, dude. It was a joke. So, you guys want me to read some of the reviews I found? Yes, reading is hard. Here's one from Kelly R. She gives a half a star. Kelly says, There were no jump scares, which is the only way it could have been frightening. The plot is all over the place and somewhat confusing at times. I had to Google the plot to figure out what was supposed to be happening. Aw, poor confused Kelly R. Good thing for Kelly R. Google exists. Otherwise, she might not know her tits from a hole in the- Ooh! Ah! Sully, what the crap? Ooh, I just scared the wee-wee out of Kelly R. Ah, yes! Kelly R. is totally soaking her knickers right now. James K. gives it one star and says, The miniatures dollhouse theme was fantastic, but the writer-director was unable to tie this theme into the story in any meaningful way. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one from that famous anonymous person everybody always talks about. Anonymous gives Hereditary one star and says, Absolute trash. Everything any remotely functional human would do, the entire cast does the absolute opposite. The entire movie. You could make an argument for that. But you could also say that's kind of the point. Does this look like a remotely functional human being to you? But fear ye not, ye floundering whelps, for we are not demons here to mislead you. We are humble guides here to see you through the churning cogs of madness safely, and with as little spillage as possible. That's right. Say, Freddy, why don't you stay and talk about the movie with us? Um, sure. I guess I could stay a while. I've got a pretty comfortable seat here. <laughs> Well, you've got a perspective from both sides of life and death, Freddy. What did you think of the movie? I liked it. I remember a lot of people saying it was one of those slow burn kind of things. But I didn't even feel it was that slow. I feel it's paced pretty well for a movie that's just over a couple hours. It was a bit slow in the beginning, but I'd say it gets where it's going when it needs to get there. It's a very deliberate movie. It's almost like they made it on purpose. Yeah, I read some reviews where people watched the movie a second time and picked up on a lot of stuff they hadn't caught the first time, and it ended up increasing their rating. You could tell they really put thought into it. Can't complain about that. Oh, but we can. And we will. The movie opens with a sample of my favorite kind of literature, an obituary. Granny Lee has passed on, and we invade the private space of her surviving family on the day of the funeral. Tragedy Tony plays Annie, the daughter of Granny Lee, and the matriarch of this troubled nuclear family. How troubled? Well, they don't lay all the cards out on the table immediately. But it's a little telling when a person dies and everybody seems more relieved than sad. Should I be sadder? Except for little Charlie, who seems to be a little more interested in death than the average 13-year-old. Charlie also seems to garner a lot of attention from randos at inappropriate times. Granny Lee's funeral is comprised of 98% randos. To the point where Annie goes out of her way during the eulogy to mention, Oh hey, nice seeing all you randos caring about my mom now that she's dead. I've never seen you before in my life. Kinda weird. And what kind of eulogy is that anyway? My mom was a private weirdo who engaged in private rituals with private friends and she was super mean and strict and suspicious of everybody and I didn't know her at all. And the times when I thought I did and challenged her on it, she did indescribably bad things. But we're really gonna miss her. Yeah, we get the gist. We weren't all playing on our cell phones when the movie started like Kelly R. Googling Gabriel Byrne dick pics. Gross, Kelly, that's gross. 
like a hot dog that fell in a grill. Oh, and what's this? Cleaning out Granny Lee's old stuff, and he finds a book on spiritualism with a note that alludes to sacrifices and zoinks. A g -g 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 ghost. Hey, don't worry, Sonny. I'm sure it's just swamp gas reflecting off Venus. I must say, the way they did this reveal is pretty neat. Too many scary movies tend to overemphasize this kind of stuff and turn everything into a jump scare. It's infuriating. <laughs> yeah. A quick cut and a musical stab are fine for a good startling here and there, but it's all become pretty formulaic over the years. Jump scares only work when they're genuinely surprising. This bit here with Granny Lee still works even though it's set up with odd music and Annie hesitating at the doorway. It's still creepy. As it's meant to be, this moment, like so many early on in the film, aren't meant to make you jump out of your seat. They're building a palpable sense of dread that doesn't culminate until your precious whittle nervous system is primed and ready for the big scares. Yeah, jump scares aren't scary in and of themselves. They're just cheap ways to start a little baby. Booga booga booga! Ah, what the fuck? Just take my wallet. Relax, guys. I'm just trying to make Kelly RP herself again. Oh, yeah. Uh, we knew that. We know how much Kelly R likes pee. No, that's Kelly Arvik, not... Oh, oh, wait, never mind. Huh? Well, what did I say? Hey, wait a minute. That symbol looks familiar. <laughs> well, whatever it is, it's obviously a demonic sigil. You haven't seen this movie, Vapula? What? No! Movies can't hold my attention unless somebody's getting pummeled. Besides, I have better things to do, like being rich and being in charge of stuff. You're doing that well, huh? You make that much doing ad reads for a couple of little freaky creeps in a cave? His dad got him this job. Shut up, Flick! Oh yeah? Your dad hired me too. What? We've got a history. Oh! Oh shit! You two assholes, shut the fuck up and get back to the movie. You're way off track. You're... You're off base. Out of bounds. And that's... That's a penalty kick. I'll take that later when you're both sleeping and can't defend your faces. Okay, thank you. Thank you, great Lord Vabula, for kicking us in the face later in instead of now. <laughs> Nevertheless, great Lord Vapula is correct. This is indeed a demonic sigil, and we know whose sigil it is. But let's not open that can of worms just yet. So distraught by her lack of sadness, and also maybe a little creeped out by all the ghosts and occult symbols she's seeing around the house, Annie decides to visit a grief support group. And my father died when I was a baby from starvation. It's kind of odd to see a grown woman vent her dysfunctional family history in a big gushing glut like that in front of total strangers with a soccer mom makes a passive aggressive Facebook post kind of attitude. Yeah, like it's totally normal that her mom had multiple personalities and her dad starved himself to death and her brother committed suicide because Granny Lee was trying to put people inside him. Well, it was normal for her. That's why she was so screwed up, right? After watching the movie, I'm not sure how much Annie knew about her mother, but what she did know, she kept from her family as much as possible. Except for Charlie. Familial guilt was Granny Lee's way of worming her way back into Annie's life. And overpowering her. Well, we're only hearing from Annie's perspective here. Clearly, Granny Lee had her reasons for being a tough nut to crack. But I'm sure once you get down past that hard, bony exterior, she's a big old gloppy mess on the inside. Was that supposed to be heartwarming, Vic? For this movie, it is. Young Peter's having his own mommy issues with his mommy. It looks like, try as they might, they're stuck spinning in the same cycles from one generation to the next. Hey. Dealing with just one dysfunctional parent can turn into a real family curse. You might even say, it's hereditary. Wow, Sonny. Usually I'm the one who does corny shit like that. 
But it's true. Peter gets invited to a big stupid high school party, and even though Annie already knows Peter's gonna do the stupid things teenagers do, she still forces him to take Charlie along with. Why? Because it'll be fun, because you get to hang out with other kids. She does this also while knowing that Charlie doesn't want to go either. Maybe she'd rather see her socially awkward child socialize with her own peer group rather than sit up in a treehouse all day making bird sarcophago... 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 sarcophaguses? What the hell is she building in there? Sarcophaguses? There's nothing wrong with spending all your time alone making art out of roadkill, Sonny. It's what got me through adolescence. Yeah, yeah. Everybody's already heard you brag about how you were voted most likely to desecrate a grave. You're just jealous because I never went to a school dance by myself. You can't date a skeleton, Vic. It's possible. You just haven't tried hard enough. Jeez. Where did you go to school, Vic? Texas Chainsaw High? Leatherface was our valedictorian. Say, Vic. Remember in the movie when Steven gets a call about something having been desecrated? What does that mean? You know, a week after Granny Lee's funeral? I had nothing... I had nothing to do with that. Hmm. Well, I'm sure it's probably nothing. Best to forget we even mentioned it. Yes, well, Annie succeeds in convincing Charlie to go to the party, but neither kid is too happy about it. Yeah. Peter can't be expected to be a competent chaperone because he's too intent on doing a little desecrating of his own. Desecrating dead ass, dead is. Booyah! There's no dialogue here, but you can really feel Peter's resentment and Charlie's... Uh, what the hell is up with Charlie? Wait a minute. There it is again. What's going on here? Who made this movie? Uh, just your typical... Hollywood devil worshippers, Lord, Lord Vapula. We thought you were going to sleep. Yeah, well, I got sleep apnea. Doctor says it's because my food is always still alive when I eat it. It's hard to get a full eight hours when your dinner's still trying to claw its way out of your tummy. <coughs> Nana? Nana loves you very much, Victor. <coughs> ah, there it goes. <coughs> anyway, enough about my diet. I demand to know whose sigil that is. Ah. Uh. We have no idea, oh, great Lord Vapula. Yeah, we're dumb. Why don't you just stay up and watch the movie with us and find out for yourself? Yeah, why don't you go kiss my ass? Uh, maybe later. That last gram I ate isn't sitting well with me. I think she was expired. Ha, get it? Yeah. Yeah. Good job. We got it. Cool. Sure. Sure. Good one. That's like one of my jokes. Yeah, it's funny. Ha <laughs> ha. No, wait. Ha ha. No, wait. Ha ha. Because she's dead. Laugh! <laughs> oh, 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 crap. I, I gotta go. Gee, Vic. Lord Vapula doesn't look so good. Maybe he's having an allergic reaction because your grandma was so full of nuts. Hardy har har. Great movie reference, Sonny. What? N no, I was just talking about how your grandma was so famous for... Swallowing huge amounts of sea. Man, what a great party! They've got obnoxious music, underage drinking, they're even baking cake! Gee, I wonder why this movie's going out of its way to show us this nut chopping scene. You think it has anything to do with that part earlier in the movie where they go out of their way to mention Charlie has a nut allergy? There are nuts in that. No! This is in no way foreshadowing a tragic event that's about to occur. Ah! Oh, dude. Ugh. Who did her makeup? Those ants really bring out her eyes. Yes. As to be expected, Peter ditches Charlie to go inject marijuanas with his high school crush, and Charlie is left to fend for herself against her arch nemesis. Nuts. To his credit, Peter tries to get Charlie to the hospital in time, but Hereditary is a movie that's trying to teach us a hard lesson about how one minute you're cruising through life, minding your own business, then all of a sudden, BAM! Nothing's the same. A hard lesson indeed.
Charlie's telephone pole facelift is the first big slap in the face Hereditary gives you. And what Peter does here is the first point at which folks like our anonymous critics check out. Right, when his sister's decapitated, what does Peter do? He doesn't call the cops. He doesn't call his parents. He just shifts in a drive, goes home, and goes straight to bed. Leaving Charlie's body in the back seat for Henny to discover in the morning. Is this act rational? Certainly not. The argument can be made here that the boy was in shock, and there are real-world examples of crazy reactions to crazy circumstances. But if you've paid attention to this movie, then you must forgive Peter. He never had a chance. Um, uh, this is a bit awkward. A bit beautiful day, though. <laughs> it's, uh, really making me go for a diorama right now. Boy, I sure wish I knew where a fella could get one of those. Try Tragedy Tony's commemorative catastrophe dioramas. Tragedy Tony recreates each tragic event with such intricacy that you're instantly transported back to that important moment of your life. In fact, Tragedy Tony's custom commemorative catastrophe dioramas are so detailed that upon viewing, they've caused new traumatic events to occur. Give them as gifts to friends, use them as centerpieces for holidays, or just lie in bed and stare at them all day. Hey. Dwell on your depression forever! Hey! Quality work. How does she carve such perfect expressions of anguish on their tiny faces, Vic? You only get that kind of craftsmanship through experience. Well, the experience of Charlie's death sends Annie back to the grief support group. But she has second thoughts, and as she's pulling away, she's flagged down by Joan, a mysterious woman with an unusual interest in Annie's personal problems. I'm so sorry to chase you down. Coincidentally, somebody out there is really trying to get the family into the idea of holding an oldie fashioned seance. And it ain't the mailman. I guess Annie's too blinded by grief to notice how weird Joan is. She even overlooks the fact that Joan shares her mother's interest in wholesomely embroidered occult welcome mats. Oh, Annie, you came. It's a, it's a little earlier than we said. Ah, oh, you're perfect. Come in. Creepy ass Joan puts Annie so at ease that she doesn't mind telling her about the time that she almost burned her kids to death whilst sleepwalking. And there is nothing I can say and nothing I can do. Because it happened. Sure, Annie. Whatever you say. See, it's stuff like this that really makes me suspect that Annie knew more about the kind of stuff her mom was into. Whether or not she was asleep when she tried to barbecue her kids, it proves that there was some part of her that knew of Granny Lee's sinister plans, and she was, uh, trying to save them. Boy, Peter sure looks sweatier than usual. He's covered in paint thinner, Sonny. How could you tell? By this point in the movie, Peter's cracking up, having regular hallucinations and psychotic breaks. Things are really tense around the house. This dinner scene is heavy. One of the best scenes in the movie. All these confused feelings of guilt and blame are dragged out into the open. And it's a long time coming. And all I get back is that fucking face on your face. Yeah, you remove your face immediately, young man. Oof, pretty devastating. If my mom just blamed me for killing my sister, then sat down and picked at her asparagus like nothing ever happened, I'd probably cry into my mashed potatoes. But Peter's had enough of his mother's shit, and he lobs it back at her like an ice-veined gorilla with a frozen tennis racket. She didn't want to go to the party. So why was she there? Poor Steven. He just wanted a normal family dinner. These days, the only thing that's keeping him going is sweet lady liquor. Ha! I've never met a single family issue that couldn't be solved by a keg party. Yeah? It makes me wonder what your family gatherings are like. Oh, they rule. Yeah, he let us cater his last Walpurgisnacht party. It was uh, a lot of fun. Cleaning up after everybody. His uncle beat him at beer pong, so 
Lord Fabula removed his brain with a fondue fork. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. I still got that fondue fork. What about your uncle's brain? Huh? Oh, uh, I forgot. I think I turned it into a pair of bunny slippers. I get pretty crafty when I'm drunk. Well, Annie's pretty crafty herself. And so's her new friend Joan, in more ways than one. I know she's supposed to be all caring and matronly and whatnot, but I think she's weird. I hate it when people are all touchy-feely like that and get all up into your personal space with the hugging and the grabbing and the butthole massage. I... I don't remember that part happening in the movie, Vic. Huh. Take a time out, Vic. You look like you need to work through some things. Yeah, I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Joan corners Annie, and what do you know? She's really trying to sell her on the idea of having a seance. You know, for closure or whatever. An open seance. Vic had a point. I did? Yeah, about the touchy-feely thing. It's really weird how Joan keeps directing Annie to focus on her and what she's saying. No, 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 I know, I know, I know what that smile is. It's like hypnosis. And what she's saying seems rehearsed. What? You're suggesting kind-hearted Joan might have some ulterior motive to being an overbearing busybody? Well, yeah, Sonny. I've never thought it was a good idea to trust super nice people who are overly concerned with expressing care and concern for total strangers. That's a good way to end up in a cult. One second you're thinking, hey, this person's really nice. Then the next second you're surrounded by nude elderly people Smelling each other's farts and sacrificing oh. corpses to pain. Don't say it! Look, Freddy, I think you're being a bit too cynical. Besides, aren't you in a cult? Yeah, but I'm like, the leader. That's a totally different situation. Which reminds me, Sonny. I'm concerned about you. You're too trusting. I'm afraid somebody might take advantage of you someday. What? Say, you're right. I I'm afraid of that too. What? What'll I do? I think you should come with me. I've got some terribly offensive Xerox pamphlets that might interest you. Also, there's candy. If you got candy, I'm getting in your van. Is your van got, like, a big dragon? Airbrushed on the side? Hey! Hey, I like candy, too! Assholes. Fine, I don't need them to ruin this shit. Okay, kids. On with the movie. Somehow, Joan convinces Annie to come back to her place for a seance. And she calls up the spirit of her dead grandson, who puts on the usual Vegas nightclub act. How did you do that? But I guess Annie's never been to Vegas because it totally creeps her out. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Joan doesn't let her leave without giving her a how to summon the dead guide for dummies and offering some rather strange words of encouragement. You didn't kill her, Annie. I guess they abruptly ended this scene here because they didn't want to show Annie splitting the old bag's lip. Because, you know, that's what any normal person would do to a sociopathic Budinsky. Annie has trouble sleeping that night because she's dreaming about killing her kids more than the usual amount. She figures the only way to fix the problem is to wake her family up at the ass crack of dawn and force them to conjure up a ghost. Steven wore his James Randy beard to the table. Oh, for fuck's sake. Sweetheart, please. Please, I tried this 20 minutes ago and it worked. I would what not be worked? bringing you down here if it didn't. Well, I just need to show you. Show what? Fuck! But Peter's willing to give it a shot for the sake of bringing the family together. But, uh, it doesn't end well. Stop! 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 You think it ever occurred to them to just, I don't know, take a trip to Six Flags together? Go camping? Visit a Charles eating cheese? Given the choice between possession or pizza, I'm going with pizza every time. And they got whack-a-mole. They certainly do. Mole! <laughs> oh, uh, gee, sorry, Valentino. I just get so excited thinking about whacking off all those little moles. Uh, what? I said, I'm the whack-a-mole champ, and I take the game seriously. Did you know, back in 79, I ate the Chinese whack-a-mole champ in a Charles eating cheese? And... Hey, what's with that blue light there? That looks awfully familiar. Well, I'm, I'm sure it's just the glare off the TV, your wackness. That swamp gas. Weather balloon? Weather balloon? I get the feeling you're up to something, Vel Velveeta. And when I find out what... 
Say, isn't it about time for another word from our sponsor? Recently, I just lost my Nana. And her vengeful spirit won't rest without a fitting tribute to her memory. Won't someone please help? Are vengeful spirits invading your home? Jealous of your ability to breathe oxygen, walk around, and generally be alive? Show your deceased family members that you still care by getting them one of Tragedy Tony's custom-made commemorative catastrophe dioramas! Tragedy Tony spent years honing her craft. Your family phantasms will be so impressed with the quality that they just might re-die! Wow! Tragedy Tony's commemorative catastrophe dioramas are just the thing! Yeah! I picked up a couple myself for a baby shower last week. Really? Seems like kind of a weird gift for the birth of a baby. Oh, it wasn't that kind of baby shower. Uh, use your imagination. Uh-huh. Well, I won't be getting any sleep tonight. Thanks, Tragedy Tony! Yeah, so, uh, Charlie's ghost, or whatever it is, seems to have a hard-on for Peter. And when the supernatural shenanigans ramp up around the house, Annie's convinced that she's the only one who can stop it. Because, uh, well... And I started it. It isn't explained. Again, I just get the idea that Annie knows a lot more than she's willing to admit to anybody. Maybe even herself. Before the family seance, she tells Stephen that she'd been seeing apparitions. Zach Baggins says that means ghosts. Uh-huh. Well, we don't see these apparitions exactly, but she was definitely doing some weird shit before she got around to waking up the boys to play medium. She sets Charlie's sketchbook on fire, assuming it's a possessed object. But a funny thing happens. When the book starts to burn, so does Annie. She pays another visit to Joan, looking for a solution to the problem that doesn't involve her dying. Joan ain't home, but we can see she's been a busy little beaver. Huh. Seems like Mother Joan hates teenagers as much as I do. Jeez. Why doesn't he flip her the bird? Yeah, or jump the fence and go world star on her ass. I don't let no old lady talk to me like that. I would have been like, no, you get out. Then I would have gave her the old Mexican shovel punch and exploded her liver like a room temperature jello mold. Boom, pow, split out. How you like me now? Ha ha. I'd get jiggy all over her face with my fist. Freddy, why, why, why am I in this giant cooking pot? Just think of it as a jacuzzi. Do jacuzzis normally have potatoes and carrots in them? Sure, it's good for the skin. Hmm, I have been looking a little jaundiced lately. Listen, Sonny, I need to use your body for a while, okay? Oh, uh, well, this is so sudden. Uh, I must admit, I've... Never known the touch of a woman on my wee wang. No, it's not like that, Sonny. It's about that thing. You know, that thing we can't talk about in front of Vapula. Something bad's about to happen, and only I can stop it. Only, I kinda need thumbs. I got thumbs? I got two? Yeah, I noticed. So what do you say? Then I'd be all like, how's that curb taste, Joan? Uh-huh. Yeah? You expel me? Prepare to get expelled from my ass. Then I'd eat her. Then you'd eat her. Yeah. Oh, am I boring you, Varg? No, oh great consumer of geriatrics. I'm just sorta of down on account of you eating my nana. Oh, yeah. I did do that. I peeled your nana like a... Uh... Uh... It's fine. Let's just move on. No, wait. Uh... They're, uh, yellow, you, you eat them. God, this, this is giving me a headache. Shouldn't we get back to the movie? Look, Annie's finally drawing the connection between Granny Lee and Joan and their stupid welcome mats. She rushes home and tears through Granny Lee's old things and, oh fuck. And what? And, and the movie's over! Hey! They all get therapy, and everyone enjoys a nice family-sized banana split together. Bananas! That's what I was thinking of. Now, why was I thinking of bananas again? Hey, wait a minute. Payman? Why, why the, the hell, hell is this guy, guy in the movie? movie? Ah.
I hate that guy. Oh boy. They made a movie about him. Wee and you guys are reviewing it. Oh, I'm so mad. I could. I could. <laughs> Your nana has returned, sweet Victor. Have you been washing behind your ears? Nana? <laughs> no, it wasn't your Nana, idiot. It's fucking Payman. Of course he'd show up anytime his name's dropped. You set this up, didn't you, Vigo? What? No! To be honest, we were hoping you'd be asleep as usual during this part of the movie. Well, wrap this shit up before he comes back and starts bragging about thieving cheese with Brie Larson or canoodling in a club with... Benadryl Cumbersnatch. So, uh, Annie learns that her mom was basically a total jerk to everybody in the family for the sake of creating a suitable host for King Payton. Don't call him that. The only place he's royalty is on that stupid, tacky Fire Island resort he calls a kingdom. Him and his measly 200 legions of spirits. Okay. So Granny Lee was matron of a local demon-worshipping cult. And she's been prepping Charlie to be the earthly body for an evil spirit in exchange for a few shekels and... and... her own car dealership, I guess? What she gets out of the deal isn't explicitly shown, but it doesn't seem like Granny Lee was the best haggler in town. Also, look here. It says that King... <laughs> Ding Dong Doodly can doodle if you don't fuck with no bitches. And if you get him anywhere near a vagina, he gets super ticked off. It's even underlined. He covetously canoodles the human male noodle. That ain't no secret. Not a closet to be found in that guy's house. Wow. Is uh, that why you don't like him, Lord Vapula? What? What do you think I am, some kind of bigot? No, I don't like him because he's a dick. And he kisses up to my dad all the time. Sending him drapes and fancy pineapple drinks because he thinks it'll get him somewhere, you know? Politically. Me the title of the king, didn't it, Vappy Wappy? Vappy Wappy? Growl! I hate it when people get my name wrong! Tell me about it. And you're just a lowly duke, aren't you? <laughs> <sighs> I'm still higher up on the food chain than you, bitch. And if you've got any doubt in your mind about that, just fly a little closer to my terrible snapping jaws. What are you smoking? Hobo's beard and rhinoceros turds? Hmm. I'll have you know that this is the finest tobacco in all of the- arr, 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 arr. <laughs> Put the claws away, kitten. You know I'm too fast for you. Uh, I, 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 why don't you go and chillax for a while, oh great Lord Vappy? I, I mean, great Lord Vapula? I'm afraid somebody's gonna get hurt. Namely me. Fine, Vernon. I've got a headache from the garbage that little twerp's been smoking anyway. Smells worse than your diaper vault in here. I'm gonna go playfully bat around a ball of yarn for a while. I, I mean, uh, dismember some virgins. Whatever you need to unwind a little, mittens. You're wound too tight. <laughs> you better be gone when I get back. Or what? Grrr, dick. Take care of my light work for me and finish this stupid movie so I can go cash the check. If he isn't gone when I get back, I'm gonna take it out on you. Me? What what I do? Oh, you don't pay him any mind. He can't do anything. Just go on about your business, my little green bean. Uh, okay. Well, thank you for gracing us with your presence, King Payman. Have you seen Hereditary? Oh, sure. I was thinking about filing a lawsuit, though. It doesn't really do me any justice. I know, right? As I was saying, if Granny Lee knew you weren't into gals, why did she try to stuff you inside little Charlie? Pissing off the deity you're attempting to worship doesn't sound like a great idea. Eh, breaking religious tenets comes with the territory. I mean, just look at Christianity. <laughs> Good point. Anyway, it should come to no surprise at this point that Annie's new friend Joan has a long-standing relationship with Granny Lee, and she's been doing her damnedest to finish the ritual and put King Payman inside Peter, where he belongs. It felt weird saying that. Oh, 
It's even weirder doing it, honey. <laughs> you're cute. Did anyone ever tell you that your abnormally bulbous head is quite attractive? I, I mean, they've mentioned the abnormally bulbous part, but uh, not that last word you just said. Tell me, Victor. Have y'all ever been invaded by an evil spirit? Bah. Hey, Peckerheads! Sonny? Sonny? Uh, did you get a haircut? It's Winifred, Vic. Sonny's got food poisoning. He's stuck in the pot at the moment. Don't you mean stuck on the pot? Yeah, sure. Whatever. You're stupid. You'll believe anything I say. I sure will! <laughs> Winifred? Payman? You're looking taller. I'm wearing Sonny's body. I came back to help Vic finish the movie, and I needed hands for gesturing and stuff. Oh, so I take it that frumpy bathrobe wasn't your decision then? Sorry, Freddy. King Payman isn't really a fan of chicks. Sorry, I meant babes. It's cool, Vic. Payman and I are quite familiar with each other. I'm just here to help you with the movie. Really? Yep. I said I'd hang out, so here I am. Lead the way, little buddy. Oh, cool! Well, you're just in time for things to get crazy. As if finding Granny Lee's demonic scrapbook wasn't bad enough, Annie finds Granny Lee herself hanging out with a bunch of CG flies in the attic. What is it with modern movies these days and CG insects? It really cheapens things. Plus, it puts bug wranglers out of a job. And that's a real pity. Weren't you two supposed to be talking about my movie? Uh, I thought you didn't even like this movie. I don't, but it's about me, sort of. Anyway, Vixie, why don't we let this Winifred here just finish the movie, and we can go someplace quiet and talk. Don't do it, kid. If he possesses you, you'll never be seen again. Well, uh, I really should finish the movie. It's kind of my job. I wouldn't want Lord Vapula to fire me, literally. Like, terminate me with fire. Oh, pish posh. Look, this is the part where Peter gets violently assaulted by a ghost. Ooh, he's flexible. Poor Steven. He spent the whole movie trying to pretend that everything's okay. But picking up his son from school proves to be too much, and he finally breaks down. Oh, what a wiener. It's just a little rough play. Boys will be boys. I think his nose is broken, King Payman. Annie tells Stephen that his mother-in-law's back, and she ain't in the guest room. But Stephen's done enabling her crazy bullshit. He accuses her of digging up Granny Lee herself. He won't even give her the benefit of the doubt and help her commit ritual suicide by burning Charlie's sketchbook. Too bad for both of them, because they've fallen right into Payman's trap. I... Yes. W was there a trap? You're asking me like I wrote this crap. Well, instead of Annie going up in flames, Stephen gets crispier than a Peking duck. And witnessing this horror ostensibly creates the opening payment needs to possess her. It all seems a little messy, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it seems like a possession could have been pulled off a bit more efficiently. Oh, who cares about efficiency? See, I love a good joke. Making things as baffling as possible is just good fun. <laughs> Excuse me. Welcome back, your horribleness. I just finished my saucer of milk, and I'm feeling much better now. So I'm back to do the last live read. Is that okay with you, your highness? Oh, please. The Ruiners is brought to you by Tragedy Tony's Commemorative Catastrophe Dioramas. Tragedy Tony's Commemorative Catastrophe Dioramas not only appease vengeful spirits, but they provide hours of entertainment. Toy with these tiny dolls the way malevolent forces beyond your control toy with your life. Hey guys, remember when James K said the dolls didn't mean anything? Ha ha ha! Good night, mates! I'm Tragedy Tony and I'm just wild about me dioramas! Here's me latest one, I call it me mum's memories, a memorial! Even when you're a little baby. She wouldn't let me feed you because she needed to feed you. You're crazy. Let me capture your precious memories, eh? No, all commissions by Tragedy Tony must be done through mail. Never attempt to contact Tragedy Tony in person. Tragedy Tony is not allowed on school grounds. 
If Tragedy Tony attempts to personally deliver your finished diorama, run- Get the fuck out of the house! Thanks, Tragedy Tony! Oh, boo on her! You got lots of balls to be talking smack about the show's sponsor. What are you trying to do, lose me money? I've got 36 legions of illegitimate kids! Do you have any idea how much money it costs to avoid taking responsibility for their upbringing? I gotta buy fake IDs, cosmetic surgery, a new fake beard, like every other day. Sorry, but there's just way too many women in this movie for my taste. This movie is supposed to be about me and my loving relationship with this troubled teen and his questionable body odor. I'm sure Pornhub's more your style. Why don't you leave the film reviewing to the professional? Yeah! That's you, Vic. Huh? Oh, oh yeah! We're just about to the end of the movie! Speaking of questionable body odor, why don't you drop this boring gig and let me take you out for some cheese fries? No possession on the first date. Scout's honor. Ah! Uh... I can only go outside between 2.45 and 3.20 a.m. and I have to constantly wear dark sunglasses. You probably shouldn't listen to this guy, Vic. The last kid he took out for cheese fries. They found his body in the dumpster out back and his head was found deep fried and filled with spinach artichoke dip. Oh, that'd go great with some sourdough bread! Oh, it's to die for. You get the grease hot enough and the scalp just peels away like a bloomin' onion. Oh, I mean, I don't know what you're talking about. Vic, don't listen to her and her lying titties. Uh, just a head here? Yeah, you wish, bitch. Will you all please just shut up? Voldemort, you finish your movie review before you get to go play outside. Ah! Those are the rules. You can get decapitated after the video. Oh boo, finish your little thing, Vicky. Then you can take a ride with me on my magic camel. <coughs> well, uh, Heyman has taken over Annie, but of course we all know Peter's the real target because oh. penis. So the evil spirit waits until dark and chases him around the house. Hey, there's that smiley creep from Granny Lee's funeral. I knew he'd show up again. Yeah, there's a lot of familiar nudes here. Seems like the whole town was in on the plot to mess with one poor kid. Kinda cheapens the benefits of having a special business relationship with a demon when everybody's aunt and uncle is also on the take. Well, witnessing his dad charbroiled and his mom giving herself the old piano wire scarf wasn't enough. But the sight of those wrinkly old farts drives Peter over the edge and out the window. And look at that. Payman takes the opportunity to possess his body while he's unconscious. That's date rape. And that's against the law, buddy. I don't think Peter's really dead. And that definitely adds to the tragedy. He's trapped in his own body by an evil spirit that gets to style his hair however it wants. Say, where is Sonny anyway? This is basically the end of the movie here, and it wouldn't feel right without him. Huh. Hello? Freddy? My nose itches. Well, Sonny's here. Most of him anyway. Yeah, hurry up, why don't you? I've got reservations for us at the Burger King. He never consented to going anywhere with you. He never had a choice, missy. I'm a king of hell. I could just take his big old supple noggin right now if I wanted to. I just wanted to get the boy a burger first. I'm not an animal. Bah. Finish the fucking movie. God! Uh, 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 Peter follows Annie's floating corpse up to the treehouse and meets his new subjects, a bunch of smelly old naked people. And the dead bodies of the family matriarchs posed in tribute to Charlie's decomposing head on a mannequin. Joan catches him up to speed on the plot and they all live happily ever after. The end! Hail Payman! Hail Payman! At last. Now come with me, my love, to Applebee's. Not so fast, Pooh Man. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like that one. Anyway, take this. Oh no! A triangle trap! That's the most trappiest occult symbol there is! I thought the hi hat was the trappiest symbol there is. Did anybody get that joke? Shut up! Ah! Bubblegum! Evasive maneuvers! <laughs> you haven't heard the last of me, you party poopers! Nice trick, Winnie. Look. Either call me Freddy or get triangled, bitch. Wow. 
That made my wiener feel funny. Well, thanks for saving me, Freddy. That guy was kind of aggressive. No problem, Vic. So what did you think of the movie, Vappy? Uh, me? Well, I don't know. I kind of thought all the headless bodies were cool, but that cult of old people just seemed kind of dumb. Like, what, you murder four generations of your family, torture your own kids to the point of madness, then decapitate yourself? For what? Yeah, I mean, it looks like the family had money, but they weren't like world leaders or anything. And everybody else in town was in the cult too. So, like you said, it's nothing special. What kind of power and riches do they get out of the deal? Well, nothing, really. In the end, it's all just one big game being played by a demon that has everybody wrapped around its little finger. The whole doll metaphor is obviously about free will and how nobody's got any. Even the cult members are only doing what they're doing because they're a bunch of dolls in a playset. And why did Joan have to tell Peter that he's Payman, if Payman was the one who was orchestrating everything the entire time? Wouldn't he already know what's going on? And yet Peter's still walking around with the same dazed and confused look on his face, just like Charlie at the beginning of the movie. The rules for possession are definitely odd. It seems like Payman could just do whatever he wanted from the start. And the whole ritual was, like, just a prank, bro. I get the feeling that Ari Aster's looking at life as a big, cruel joke. And that's what this movie is about. Payman is described as a god of mischief, after all. Eh, I think that's kinda lazy. There's no real character development when everything just falls apart and nobody really has any choice in the matter. Nobody grows, and the only thing that changes is people lose about 10 pounds from the neck up. Dude, since when did you care about character development? You hate any movie that doesn't feature at least one spinning back fist. You getting sassy with me, Vapula? Uh, oh wait, that that's my name. Anyway, shut up. You know I'm right. He's got a point, but I think part of the problem is that this movie isn't really supposed to be high art anyway. People sort of overhype Hereditary, though. I guess because people don't expect a horror movie to also be a good drama with powerful emotions. So, when somebody crafts a movie like this, everybody freaks out and starts to call Ari Aster the new Kubrick or whatever. Yeah, I mean, it is just one movie. It's a good one. But in the end, it's just a silly old horror movie about demonic possession. Ari Aster didn't reinvent the wheel here, he just put some really nice rims on it. Ooh, like the ones that look like fidget spinners? Uh, sure, I guess. I love those. I get the feeling you chase parked cars, Vaps. I might. Why, is, uh, that something you're into? Anyway, silliness and irrationality aside, I think this was a pretty good movie. And I'm excited to see what else Ari Aster has cooking up in that big head of his. Oh shit, that reminds me. I better bring Sonny back. His next stuff is starting to get itchy. Whoa, Sonny, what happened to you? Well, I don't know. One minute we were talking about Candy and then she sort of got me to saw my own head off. She's quite convincing. Sorry, Sonny. I had to get rid of payment, and I couldn't hold my magic triangle without hands. Huh. So, in a way, I guess I kind of saved the day too. Sure, why not? That's a spiffy looking body you got there, Sunday. Oh yeah, a bunch of smelly old nudists came along when I was in the jungle and I guess they felt bad for me, so they put my head on this. So, wait a minute. You took Sonny's body so you could stop payment from decapitating me? How does that make sense? Yeah, it's really not a fair trade, I'd say. It sounds pretty fair to me. Oh, relax. You can have your body back. I'm gonna need so many hair washings to get the stench out. You, uh, didn't do anything unmentionable with my body, did you? <sighs> of course not. Aw, oh, damn. Hey, kids. Wasn't that silly? We hope you liked the video. If you did, Go ahead and smash that like button like a little girl's head against a telephone pole. You can also leave a comment and tell us what you thought. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll be the first to know when the next video comes out. Also, feel free to check out our Patreon page if you want to support us. Thanks, and until next time, don't lose your head. Ha! But no, seriously, wear your seatbelt. Safe driving is everyone's responsibility.